Let's look at the standard material parameters. The standard material is the most universal. It will render in almost any renderer except for iRay. And although it's a bit antique, it still serves its purpose. So let's take a look at its basic parameters. I'll go back to the material editor with the M key. And let's create a new standard material. And it's going to be found in the material map browser in Slate under materials. And scroll down a bit, you're looking for scan line. And again, the standard material will work with almost any renderer, but just happens to be in the scan line category. Drag and drop that into the view area. And now we've got a new material. Let's double click on that. And I'll call it sofa standard. And let's assign it to one of these sofas here. And it's actually a group. If I select any member of the group, since the group is closed, then all of the members get selected. I'll change the color over here on the sofa before I assign it so that we'll be able to see the assignment happening. Give that kind of like a brown color. And then drag from the little output circle over onto any one of those group members. And then we get a pop-up asking, do we want to assign just that one object or to the entire selection? Let's do the entire selection. And now we've got that applied. We can deselect the object now by just clicking anywhere, like maybe in this open window. And we can play around with the parameters now. We of course have the diffuse color, that's the base color. And there's also the ambient color, and that's the color of the object where it's not illuminated. Usually they're the same thing. You would usually want the non-illuminated area to be the same as the illuminated area and to cause the shading to be determined by the lighting. And that's why they're locked by default. If you click on either one of those and change it, it'll change them both, as you can see. If you want, you can unlock it. There's a little unlock switch here, but there's really no compelling reason to do that. Then we have the specular color. That's the color of highlights. That's usually left at white, unless you're dealing with certain types of metals, like gold, for example has yellow or orange highlights. That's different from brass. Brass has white highlights. So gold is kind of special. Usually though, you want white specular colors. However, if you don't change the values here under specular highlights, then you won't get any highlights on your object. You'll need to increase the specular level to some amount. And as I do that, you can see we're getting some highlights on these curved surfaces. And this curve here indicates the shape of the highlights. And what we're seeing here currently is kind of a nice spread across those highlights. And that spread is actually a good thing if we were trying to accomplish the look of leather, for example. But if we wanted something that was highly polished, then we would want a sharper highlight. To do that, we can increase the glossiness here. Click and drag on that. And now we've got very small, very bright highlights. The specular level actually can be increased beyond 100. You can even take it up to 999 if you really need to blast out the highlights. You can see how bright that is now. And then if I reduce the glossiness down, we're getting these crazy mad bright highlights. For something like this though, I probably wanna have a specular level in the range of more like maybe 70 or something like that. And then very little glossiness. Cool, now there are lots of other parameters in here. For example, if you open up extended parameters, you'll see properties to determine transparency, and for example, the index of refraction and so on. And then scrolling down a little bit more, there's a section for maps, and these are ways to vary the color across the surface or vary things like the transparency. We'll be looking at mapping in the next chapter. I just wanted to open that up to show you that that's where you would find it in the standard material.